everyone, Laura here, and oh my goodness, we are almost at the end of Vlogtober, and today is my last individual video. What a month it has been. So I am going out with a bang by talking about a topic that I love. I got the ears on, it has to be about Ron Disney, and it's how to get great character and race photos. I happen to have a bit of experience with this. of character photos. I didn't even know the full count until I put together that montage, but really getting character photos is one way that really separates Run Disney from other race weekends, and I just love it. Before I get into the tips, however, I want to quickly mention that Heather Jorgensen from the Running with Grace channel and I have been putting up a ton of Run Disney tip videos. You can find links to all of them below. I'll also be sharing all the other Run Disney Tip videos I have done as well as a blog post on how to get great photos and video for a race recap. Now on to the tips. So where can you get these great character photos? For Disney World races, there are occasionally characters out at the Expo that's always held at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Center. This is hit or miss. I've seen them out for the Wine and Dine. They're often out at Princess. Sometimes there are weekends when they don't have any. There will be characters out before and after each race, as well as in the park and along the highways. For Disneyland races, yes, I know, there will be a hiatus after the Superheroes Half Marathon, but I am going to stay positive and say that they will come back. For now, however, in the past, there have not been characters at the Expo, before the race or after the race, or while off property. For the recent Disneyland Half Marathon, however, there were a ton within the parks that definitely made up for that. We also have a list of awesome non-character photos that you can get throughout each park that we have called the Make Magic Photo Challenge that you can find by hitting this link up here or down below. Before the race, you want to clear out your phone and make sure there is plenty of data storage, especially if you're like me. If you're using your phone, you also want to take steps to ensure a longer battery life. This includes lowering your screen's brightness, turning off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth if you don't need it, and switching to low battery mode. For half marathons, I will pack a charger and cord in my gear bag to use before and after the race. For the full marathon, however, I will bring a charger and cord with me. If you plan on carrying your phone, which does make it a lot easier, add on a wrist strap for some extra drop protection. For those of us who really aren't interested in carrying a cumbersome gimbal or other stabilizing tool, pop sockets are fantastic. It really helps to stabilize in your phone and it's very inexpensive. Be aware that reflector strips will shine bright in photos taken in the dark. You also want to make sure that your race bib is in the front and visible for great photo pass pictures rather than being hidden beneath a shirt or on your thigh. Now before the race, you want to make a game plan. While things do constantly change, you can get a feel for the amount and types of characters that are available for the race you're doing by watching race recaps. For example, by watching race recaps from the Princess Half Marathon, you'd see that Captain Jack and the Princess are often out within the first three miles. And a quick tip about that, in the past, the Princess Half Marathon course would loop back around, so if the lines for Captain Jack and the Princess were too long at the start of the race, you can loop back and hit them around the mile 11, mile 12 mark. If you're running solo, think about your pace and how much time you can or would be willing to spend on getting character photos. There is a 16 minute mile pace minimum, but the official clock doesn't begin until the last runners go over the start line, which is usually the balloon ladies. So considering that each corral starts approximately 35 minutes apart, depending upon which corral you're in, you might have some wiggle room. Just don't get carried away and make sure that your garment is set to not pause when you stop so you have an accurate account of your time. Factor in bathroom breaks, but remember that once you pass the last sweep mark, you can relax. For most Disney World races, this means when you enter Epcot. 
when I walked the last Wine and Dine and Princess Half Marathon, once I came up to that backstage entrance at Epcot and I saw the character line, I was like, eh, put on the brakes, I'm getting a photo. There were also a couple more in the parks that I was able to get. For those running with a partner or in a group, you want to have a conversation beforehand about how often you will stop and which characters really want to get, etc. If you're on completely different pages, it's okay to run separately because these races are expensive. You should be able to enjoy them the way you'd like. For those who are faster and start in earlier corrals, something else to consider when coming up with your game plan that by stopping frequently for character photos, you will be placing yourself among the pace of slower runners or run walkers. This means you'll either have to weave, run off road, or slow significantly during crowded spots. If this is something that would annoy you, then consider getting pre and post raced or waiting for characters that have a very short line instead. Now let's get into race day. Yes, I know, I am constantly preaching this, but for Disney World races, the lines can get so insanely long that you're lucky if you get one to two character photos, even if you're among the first to arrive. So getting there early is crucial. I'm talking being on the first bus, or if you're driving, leave before the bus transportation starts. To find the end of the line, look for the cast member who is holding up a sign. A good strategy is to pick the character you have your heart most set on and get in that line or choose a shorter line in hopes that you'll have time for a second. Also know that there are often character changes. For example, at the Princess Half Marathon, they will have two lines for princesses and each line will rotate between two princesses. If a friend arrives before you do, have them get in the character lines and you join them. But in consideration for those behind you, only do a group photo then. Keep in mind that the line will be cut off to ensure that all runners have time to get to their corral. A popular question is how long the waits will take. Well, this depends. It varies. Sometimes a hideously long line goes like this. Sometimes a short one takes forever. There are several factors that go into this. The biggest is how many cast members are taking photos. Unless it is a selfie station, there is usually always a photo pass photographer there as well as a cast member who will take a picture with your phone. If there are two or more cast members rotating back and forth, then the line will go very quickly. Also, if there are large groups or pairs waiting in line who will be getting a group photo as compared to an individual, that will speed things up as well. Face characters can also take longer if they get chatty. For example, at the last Princess Half Marathon, Gaston was chatting up with all the runners instead of doing what we wanted him to do, and that is stand there and look pretty. By law, characters are also required to take breaks, so it's quite possible you might show up just when they leave for that break. Most times, however, this wait won't be long, and a lot of times the line will thin out, so if you really want the character picture, then stay. Now, there are some ways that you can speed things up to make the line shorter for those behind you. If you are in a running group or with a partner, then use only one phone for the photo and then share amongst yourselves. Plan out your poses beforehand instead of when you get up there. Make sure your phone is ready and camera app open before it's your turn. Also, if you would like your picture in landscape, which is what I always get because they look better in race free caps, hold your phone sideways and mention it to the cast member. When it's your turn, quickly run to the character and strike your pose with your bib visible. Also, once you're out of the way, take a quick glance at your photo before rejoining the course. If it's really bad due to cast member error, like if it's fuzzy or if your head is cut off, then ask one of the rotating cast members for a redo. But only if it's really bad. Mussy hair does not count. Another great tip for those running in a group or with a partner is to have one person wait in line while the other goes for a quick bathroom break. This way you're pulling double duty. Also, a quick note about the full marathon. I noticed both times that the lines were so much shorter near the end. I'm talking non-existent for this picture we got with Fairy Godmother and while we were going through World Showcase, we saw several princesses with no line. A princess with no line. Imagine that. Now, if the lines are simply too long and you are worried about your time, you can still have fun and capture great memories. One way is to get a run by over the shoulder selfie instead. If you time it just right, you can snap the picture when the runner getting her photo leaves. Or make your own character photos. This gator was ignored by many, but we saw potential. And don't forget mile markers. They make for great photos as well. And for the most part, the line is minimal. 
If you're running solo, there's also a good chance that the runner before or after you would be willing to swap phones so you can each get a nice picture. And rather than doing the same pose for each mile marker, vary them and have some fun by mimicking the characters. This one with Merida is our favorite. Speaking of photos, make sure you mix things up rather than using the same pose over and over. I often do this. I have this one signature pose with one arm up and one arm out, and I have to remind myself to mix it up. But speaking of signature photos, come up with something fun for yours. For Jackie and me, it's the Huggy Pose. We have to get one at the Hub in Disneyland by Watt and Mickey and anywhere else that's possible. And I can't leave out the cheerleaders. Some spectators are total characters as well, especially during the Star Wars and Superheroes Half Marathon weekend where a lot of cosplayers come out to play. So be sure to stop for photos with them. I love stopping for pictures with great race signs such as these or for folks who go out of their way to encourage us like this guy. And dogs, I will always stop for dogs. For those of you who will be doing the full marathon, be sure to stop for pictures with the animals outside of Animal Kingdom if they're out. Just a warning, don't pet the warthog unless you want your hands to smell like warthog for the next few miles. And jump shots. It wouldn't be a Joyful Miles video without some mentions of joyful jump shots. My best tips are have your photographer use the burst video and be prepared for a couple takes. In the past, I've also had them film video that I would take a screenshot from, but that has varied success. Remember to keep your face relaxed. I tend to tense up or I wear this super huge gooper smile. And finally, be sure to use the hashtag JoyfulJumpShot so we can give you a repost. Now let's talk a bit about PhotoPass. If you are a Disney World or Disneyland annual pass holder, then PhotoPass pictures will be included. For others, packets are available for purchase, so you not only get great park photos, but run Disney race ones as well. Now here's some tips on how you can get some great PhotoPass pictures. At character stops, again, make sure your bib is visible. Usually the PhotoPass photographer will take their pictures first, and then you'll be directed to the cast member holding your phone. On the course, PhotoPass photographers are most often placed on either side in green pop-ups. Smile and run with good form. Photos of you hunched over with droopy hands and a gaping open mouth don't really make for the best race photo unless you're keeping it real and want to show what you truly felt like. If that's the case, then carry on. You're awesome. Do something fun and different for each one, like raising your arms or giving a thumbs up or go for a small jump shot. Just be very, very careful that you don't interrupt someone else's good photo. Now about the Disneyland's Max Pass system. Yes, there is only one more Disneyland race planned, so if you're going to be there, you definitely want to purchase this. It's only $10 per day, and it's well worth it because you get all of your race photos. Instructions on how to do so are mentioned in my Superheroes Half Marathon Tips video that will be linked below. So yes, you have reached the finish line. Congratulations. Now most times there will be characters at the finish line, whether it's on the ground or up on the stage to the side. Out of all the races I have done, and there have been a ton, I have only stopped twice for selfies, however, and I didn't like it. It just took away the momentum of my finish. Plus, it can also pose a hazard to other runners. And the last thing any of us want to do is ruin someone else's finishing line photo. So I do recommend skipping them and enjoying the finish instead. Speaking of which, something I also don't do is film. For my earlier race recaps, I always try to get great footage of the finish line. But the problem was I was so busy filming and, and worrying about having everything balanced that I didn't fully enjoy the finish. Plus, my photo pass pictures would stink because I'm like holding up my phone or looking at my phone. So now I film up until about 20 feet and then I lower my phone and truly live the moment rather than try to capture it for others. So now that you have finished and you have your bling and your snack box, if you're at a Disney World race, don't rush off. Take advantage of all the character photos that you have time for. They will also have several banners up where you can get a picture of yourself holding up that bling. You earned it. So there you go, my tips for getting great character and race photos at your next Run Disney race. 
Have I missed anything? If so, please leave them in the comments below. One more quick thing, we also have several Joyful Miles meetups planned for the upcoming Run Disney races. You can find more information about that in the description box below as well. Give this a thumbs up or share if you found it helpful. Subscribe and as always, take care and have a joyful day.